welcome to the next chapter of Flamingo Deep Water by William Douglas. We shall now have the line by line explanation of the same. Why would you want to go through the entire video? Do you have the patience to listen, to watch and hear the line by line explanation? Well friends, it's extremely important for you, know, for you to know that and the reason being when you are going to, when you will be asked to write an extract, when you get an extract out of the, uh, out of the text and you will be asked certain questions on it, if you know the story very well, right, if you know the story extremely well, you can frame your own answers according to the marks allotted. So kindly stay till the end of the video. Now before we begin, we shall know a little about the author. William Douglas was born in Maine, Minnesota. Douglas was a leading advocate of individual rights. He retired in 1975 with a term lasting 36 years and remains the longest serving justice in the history of the court. The following excerpt is taken from Of Men and Mountains, written by him. It reveals how, as a young boy, William Douglas nearly drowned in a swimming pool. In this essay, he talks about his fear of water and thereafter how he finally overcame it. You know, we all have certain phobias. Now here, if you talk about his phobia, it was water, it was hydrophobia. There are many such phobias, I'm sure we all are aware. Some are afraid of heights, some are afraid of reptiles, some are afraid of snakes. And you know what? We even have obesophobia. That's the fright of getting fat. Yes. <laughs> so we move on. Now, this happened when I was 10 or 11 years old, when William Douglas was 10 or 11 years old, he had decided to learn to swim. There was a pool at the YMCA in Yakima that offered exactly the opportunity. Now this is the Young Men's Christian Association. The Yakima River was treacherous, treacherous as in it was dangerous. Mother continually warned against it and kept fresh in my mind the details of each drowning in the river. My mother, who was extremely worried, she knew I was a little playful. So she made sure that every time there was someone who drowned in the river, she made sure that she tells me about it. And why was that? To create the fear. To create the fear in the sense, not that of not going to the water, but make sure not to go there into the Yakima River. Stay away from it is what she meant. That was the message. But the YMCA pool was safe. The, the pool had no issues, obviously. It was only two or three feet deep at the shallow end. And while it was nine feet deep at the other, the drop was gradual. Now we all know, we've all been uh, to a swimming pool. So what happens when you step into the water initially where you can just keep your feet, you know, your feet are touching the ground. It is two or three feet. It just comes till there. Then gradually the slope starts going down. You know, it comes like this. Now here, if it is two or three feet here, it will become nine feet. That was the slope of the pool. I got a pair of water wings and went to the pool. You all are aware what are water wings. They have those puffy things here, uh, which help you to, you know, float on the water and not go down, not to drown. I hated to walk naked into it and show my skinny legs. Now, obviously, when he was in a swimming costume, his legs were exposed and his legs were extremely thin. Skinny means extremely thin. And he hated doing that. I subdued my pride and did it. I overcame it. My pride, you know, there was like, I shouldn't do it. But then I overcame it. I mean, come on, you have to learn. You have to get into your costume and get into the water. So he overcame that and went ahead. From the beginning, however, I had an aversion to the water when I was in it. Aversion as in dislike. 
he hated somewhere he that phobia was already there within him a small seed of it was definitely there he somehow hated water to a good extent this started when i was 3 or 4 now how did this phobia take birth how did it start this is how this is what he is explaining this started when i was 3 or 4 years old and father took me to the beach in california now his dad took him now when he was just 3 or 4 years old you can imagine what a shorty he must have been and he took him to the beach in california he and i stood together in the surf you know that surfboard you know where you float on the waves right so his dad made you know hold him uh, held him on the surf and they were both together on the waves i hung on to him yet the waves knocked me down and swept over me he held his father tightly but the waves were so strong they were so mighty that they knocked him down that they threw him down in the water and they went over him now obviously his dad definitely must have not taken him into the deep waters knowing that he is a child with him so he was at the shallow end he was not very uh, deep where he could you know it would be dangerous for the child he didn't do that i was buried in water now this is a 3 4 year old child talking so he says i was buried it was like you know the water was totally over me i was totally under the water my breath was gone obviously a small child so uh, his breath will definitely be caught up with that even little water crossing him i was frightened father laughed but there was terror in my heart at the overpowering force of the waves now he as a child obviously took it as a big accident it was something very big for him because he was too tiny and those waves were really strong over him so definitely he had that terrible fear that terror in his heart he, he said never again i'm going to get into that water you know he had that thing in his that phobia actually took place there it gave birth over there it started over there but his dad laughed like i told you obviously they were in shallow waters not in deep waters but till you know he could come out of it that terror definitely went into his heart and mind my introduction to the ymca swimming pool revived unpleasant memories and stirred childish fears now when i was there when i started going to the ymca pool it revived that means it brought back what did it bring back it brought back certain unpleasant memories and stirred childish fears he remember the childish fear he, he already had the fear because uh, of the experience that he had with his father so that plus he, he had certain unpleasant memories there was some uh, unwanted and unpleasant memories also attached to it and what they were we shall soon see but in a little while i gathered some confidence he says okay now come on he had grown up a bit he had grown by then and so you know you tend to overcome certain things with age with maturity you don't mind you know trying it once again i pedaled with my new water wings watching the other boys and trying to learn by aping them now what he did was he had a new pair of water wings he tied them both on on his arms and then he started pedaling just like the other boys trying to learn by aping aping means imitating copying right so by aping them i did this two or three times on different days and was just beginning to feel at ease he started getting familiar with the water he started making friends with the water when the misadventure happened now gradually he was trying to you know overcome this thing he was suddenly feeling okay now i am getting very comfortable with the water and i'm sure i will swim through i will learn swimming but to his bad luck another misadventure happened what was that i went to the pool when no one else was there so one fine day he goes to the pool and he realizes there's nobody around the place was quiet 
nobody the water was still still means there was no movement the water was calm serene there were no ripples there was no movement in the water and the tiled bottom was as white and clean as a bathtub now you know when the water is still right you can see the depth you can see the floor and this was the floor where he could see white tile that the floor had white tiles on it just like you have in a bathtub you can see you know when the water is still you can see the end of the bathtub likewise he could see the tiles at the bottom because the water was absolutely still with no movement i was timid about going in alone i was a little scared i did not have that strength that oh should i go there in alone he had not yet got that full confidence that i should do that so i sat on the side of the pool to wait for others he did not want to jump into the pool alone so he waited he took his time he said never mind let others come and then i shall join then i shall get into the pool i had not been there long when in came a big bruiser of a boy now he hardly sat there for some time and suddenly there came a big bruiser a big bruiser as in a boy who's very arrogant he's just ready to fight all the time and you know like a big muscular chap big bodied and big uh, posture and he just came and what did he do he was probably 18 years old you know and he was ready to take fights any moment he had thick hair on his chest he was a hairy person he was a beautiful physical specimen a so sort of a sample type an example with legs and arms that showed rippling muscles he had muscular he had muscles you could see them you know well built all toned up legs and muscles he had he yelled hi skinny how do you like to be ducked he is like you know hey you so thin you want me to duck you you want me to push you down into the water ducked means to you know take and push in the water with that now before william douglas could even utter a word before he could even say anything what did this guy do he picked me up and he tossed me into the deep end do you remember it was 9 feet deep at the deep end it was 9 feet so what did that guy do he took him and he didn't put him at the shallow end where it was just 2 or 3 feet neither did he put him in the middle where probably it must have been 4 or 5 he put him right in the end at the deep end where it was 9 feet deep i landed in a sitting position swallowed water and went at once to the bottom now he was totally unaware he was just in his own world and suddenly this guy comes and the moment he looks at him and he listens to him this guy takes him and he pushes him now what did he do while he went down he quickly hit the bottom he landed there in a sitting position that's how he landed at the edge of the uh, pool at the end of the pool i was frightened but not yet frightened out of my wits he said i was definitely frightened now come on suddenly if someone does that to you and you are not even fully trained you you don't even know your swimming very well and suddenly someone just pushes you down there so obviously anybody would have got afraid you know anyone would have got that shock he did get scared but he was not frightened out of his wits as in he did not lose his mind his thinking power his alertness was there he did not you know panic that bad that he could not think he could think yet so what did he do on the way down while he was sinking down while he was going down i planned when my feet hit the bottom he says now when my heat will fit uh, uh, the feet will hit the bottom i would make a big jump come to the surface lie flat on it and pedal to the edge of the pool now what was his plan within that spur of a minute you know within that second as he was sinking down as he was drowning he thought of it immediately he said now the moment i touch the ground i mean you know he he was down with full force so obviously he would go right down and since he was not able to pedal yet and control himself right in the middle definitely he was to hit the bottom so when he hit the bottom he said that's what his plan was he said when i hit the bottom i will hit it really hard 
why will i do that so that i get a push i get a support from the bottom and i shoot up i immediately shoot up i will come to you know the surface of the water the surface of the pool and i will lie down immediately he says i will totally lie down and then swim towards the edge of the pool then he will go and get the corner of the pool it seemed a long way down now 9 feet for such a tiny person was obviously you know it would take some time those 9 feet were more like 90 and before i touched bottom my lungs were ready to burst he was not ready for the jump had he taken a deep breath had he tried and you know uh, inhaled enough of air enough of oxygen so that he could survive down he was not even ready right so what happened was he touched i mean the, his lungs were ready to burst because there was no breath there was he couldn't breathe any longer right he was out of oxygen but when my feet hit the bottom i summoned all my strength and made what i thought was a great spring upwards all this happened he was going down he did touch the bottom what did he do i summoned all my strength that means i gathered with full force with full energy i pushed myself up he hit the floor and pushed himself up and made what i thought was a great spring upwards he said now i thought just like you know how you suppress the spring and you leave it and zoop it goes up so he thought just like that spring when i touch and push myself i will immediately start going up like a spring i imagined i would bob to the surface like a cork i would jump immediately you know move up you know when you open the cork of a bottle what happens zoop it goes you know the champagne when you open so he said i would bob to the surface like a cork instead i came up slowly now as per his plan he thought he would do it he would make it to the surface he would lie down and he would go to the edge but unfortunately to his bad luck he started coming up undoubtedly but it was very slow now remember his his lungs were ready to burst already he was already out of oxygen okay so now he's fighting for his life he's he has run out of breath totally while he was coming up slowly i opened my eyes and saw nothing but water now when he pushed himself up you know till you get you, uh, you know get into your senses so in middle he opened his eyes but when he opened his eyes what happened all that he could see around him was only and only water water that had a dirty yellow tinge a dirty yellowish color to it i grew panicky now here the fear started coming in and it started becoming more i reached up as if to grab a rope and my hands clutched only at water now he finally did reach up now he was in a panicky mode he was in a panicky state right now he did reach up he came to the surface of the water he tried catching a rope he said i need something to have a grip something to catch but all that was there was water around him there was no uh, rope tied you know where he could just catch or you know you know take a grip and so that he could take control it it wasn't the case i was suffocating obviously he was out of oxygen he was out of breath so now he started suffocating i tried to yell but no sound came out then my eyes and nose came out of the water but not my mouth he tried to scream for help he tried to scream but the problem was his eyes and his nose he came up till here the mouth was in water it was under water so obviously he couldn't i mean even if he would have screamed the voice wasn't going to come out and obviously with your mouth open he couldn't scream when his mouth was under water he tried to yell but then there was no sound at all i flailed at the surface of the water swallowed and choked i flailed at the surface he tried you know beating at the surface he tried his arms he tried you know getting up out of the uh, surface he tried to pushing himself up but he was 
he had swallowed a lot of water by then and he was even choked because no breath. He was totally choked. I tried to bring my legs up, but they hung as dead weights, paralyzed and rigid. He tried. He said, okay, I am just here. I am at the surface. I have to just give a little push. Now, imagine the water was here. His eyes and nose were out, right? But not the mouth. So, obviously, he couldn't scream. He tried to push a little more. But the problem was his legs had given up. He had run out of energy in his legs. He couldn't even do it any longer. They were as dead weights. They were paralyzed. There was no movement and they were rigid. They were not ready to move. They were totally fixed as they were. They were like dead weights. So like it was like, you know, they would take him down because of the weight of the legs, not moving, not pedaling. He would have sunk back again. A great force was pulling me under. Obviously. Now, if you don't pedal, we all know it. If you don't pedal, you don't float. You don't stay up. You start going down. I screamed, but only the water heard me. There was no one to lend ears, obviously, because he was, you know, underwater. I had started on the long journey back to the bottom of the pool. Now, this is the second time. This is the second time. Again, I mean, this was the process which was, you know, it sort of repeated. He went down again. He could not come up. I struck at the water as I went down, expending my strength as one in a nightmare fights an irresistible force. Now what happened? I struck at the water. He finally was in such a position. You know what happens when you dream, when you have a nightmare, when you have, uh, you know, a, a bad dream? A horror, a dream full of horror. Now, for example, you feel, oh, the tiger is sort of chasing you. And you can see he's right there and he's coming and you're not moving. What happens? You get panicky, you start sweating and you get up with a start. You know, you want to stop it, but you're not able to. Why? Because it's not in your hands. It's a dream, right? Likewise, he had the same thing. He... Uh, he went down, expending my strength as one in a nightmare. Couldn't do anything. He was helpless. I had lost all my breath. Now, obviously, after struggling for so long, as it is, he had not inhaled enough. So, he was totally out of breath. My lungs ached. They, my lungs started hurting. They started paining. My head throbbed. There was beating in my brain. I could feel some beats going in my head. I was getting dizzy. Now, he was ready to lose consciousness. He was ready to faint. See children, when I am telling you so many things for one line, this all is going to help you in your answers. So please, listen attentively. But I remembered the strategy. Now, he... Physically, he had given up. He was sort of drained out, totally out of energy. But he still remembered the strategy which he had, you know, thought of, which he had planned when he was sinking for the first time. Now he is sinking for the second time. Remember, I would spring from the bottom of the pool and come like a cork to the surface. Again, the same plan. He says, now again, when I hit the bottom, I will again, you know, hit it hard so that again I can come up like spring or like a cork of the bottle to the surface. I will hit the surface. I would lie flat on the water, strike out with my arms and thrash with my legs. Again, as soon as I hit the surface, I will just lie down so that at least I can, you know, breathe and gather that strength. And then I will swim to the edge of the pool with the help of my hands and legs arms and legs. Then I would get to the edge of the pool and be safe. Now this is what is going on in his head when he is going down the second time. I went down endlessly. You know those nine feet seemed like there is no end to it. Why did it feel? You can totally understand. You can imagine that situation. You can imagine, put yourself in the situation and see how you would feel. You know when you are reading a story, do that. Put yourself in those shoes and you will feel it better. 
and of course keep visualizing keep imagining the scene as i am explaining to you i opened my eyes nothing but water with a yellow glow dark water that one could not see through again while he was going down he tried opening his eyes again he saw the same yellow water it was pretty yellow it was not clean so he couldn't see through anything he could only and only see water and then sheer stark terror seized me now when he was going down he the terror which was the total the maximum terror the ultimate terror you know totally enveloped him that fright that 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 thing of you know uh, literally like he started getting that thought that okay uh, i don't know if i'm going to survive that terror that fear that terrible fear terror that knows no understanding terror that knows no control terror that no one can understand who has not experienced it god forbid none of us should experience it but this terror if we even imagine if even if we put ourselves in those shoes you will get goosebumps because that terror there was no control over it obviously how can you're facing that situation he was there it was happening to him so that terror had that fright that fear had no control there was no understanding what is going on and obviously no one would come to know until and unless you would experience it i was shrieking under water shrieking means i was screaming loudly shrieking is to scream loudly but how would that help would your voice reach on top i was paralyzed under water stiff rigid with fear absolutely no movement now now zero energy no movement there there was nothing left in the body to fight it even the screams in my throat were frozen so beautifully it is written he couldn't even scream any longer it was it had stopped only my heart and the pounding in my head said that i was still alive now all that was making him feel that he is still alive was because his heart was thumping it was there his heart was pumping and the pounding you know his head was having those uh, terrible beats so that made him realize that he has not yet died he is still alive and then in the midst of the terror came a touch of reason i must remember to jump when i hit the bottom now again when he was in the middle of this terror he realized there was a touch there came a touch of reason this is guys come on you had planned do it just do it and i must remember to jump when i hit the bottom plan 1 when he was sinking for the first time i need to jump back at last i felt the tiles under me this is the second time he's drowning now he feels he has touched the tiles finally my toes reached out as if to grab them he was like you know let me take a good grip i jumped with everything i had the remaining energy the drained out energy that he had with all that energy he tried jumping back but the jump made no difference it did not make any difference he didn't have that energy how could he even force himself up the first time when he was fresh enough he he couldn't do it now when he when everything had given up how could he the water was still around me i looked for ropes ladders water wings anything to save me i looked around for anything to save me nothing but water obviously there was nothing a mass of yellow water held me everywhere i was totally surrounded by water stark terror took an even deeper hold on me like a great charge of electricity now this terror this 
ultimate, the maximum terror, you know, the ultimate terror, it had gone more over him. It had totally enveloped him. He was totally surrounded water and terror. It seemed like a great charge of electricity. I shook and trembled with fright. I shook, I trembled. He was shivering. He was shivering. He was scared to death. My arms wouldn't move. My legs wouldn't move. I tried to call for help, to call for mother. Nothing happened. A, a situation when you know you get into such situations, the first thing, of course, we physically try helping ourselves, but then the first thing that comes out is mom, mother. We want her help. We want her security. And then, strangely, there was light. I was coming out of the awful yellow water. Now, as he was coming up slowly, slowly, finally, gradually, he reached to the surface. At least my eyes were. Now, his eyes could see that light. My nose was almost out too. Even his nose was nearly, nearly out of the water. Then I started down a third time. Can you just imagine his plight, his condition? I sucked for air and got water. He tried to breathe air, but there was water. The yellowish light was going out. Now that light which he could see the surface, again it started becoming dark. Now this is the third time where he is hitting the water. Then all effort ceased. Everything came to a full stop. His effort to try to save himself stopped, ceased. I relaxed. Even my legs felt limb. They were totally gone, broken. Uh, in the sense, they were weak. They had no energy. And a blackness swept over my brain. Now that capacity to think, that capacity to fight, over. Absolutely nil. It wiped out fear. It wiped out terror. Now that blank thing that came in his brain, Obviously, his brain literally stopped functioning. So then there was no fear. There was no terror. There was nothing left because there was no thinking capacity left. There was no more panic. There was nothing to think about. It was quiet and peaceful. Can you imagine the state he is going? Where is he heading? Everything had stopped. Nothing to be afraid of. This is nice to be drowsy, to go to sleep, no need to jump, too tired to jump. It's nice to be carried gently, to float along in space, tender arms around me, tender arms like mothers. Now I must go to sleep. He was breathing his last. He felt that even when death was coming to him, when he stopped everything, he stopped putting in all efforts where he could save himself, he finally had given up. Now, he was experiencing the feeling of death. He could see death right in front of his eyes. And the feeling that he went through while he was experiencing death he says, was more than peaceful. There was no panic. There was no terror. There was no fear. There was absolutely nothing. Everything was blank. He felt the arms around him. He felt, you know, those nice tender arms, those loving and caring arms like his mother's, just taking him into them. Now, he says, I must go to sleep, sleep forever. I crossed to oblivion. Oblivion means in that condition where he knew nothing, where nothing was known to him at all. Where is he? What is happening? What is around him? Is he yet in the water? Has he died? Nothing. 
he knew nothing and the curtain of life fell students do you realize how beautifully the words have been given the curtain of life fell they could have simply said he died but no or he breathed his last the curtain of life fell the next i remember i was lying on my stomach beside the pool vomiting now obviously he was a, he was you know uh, taken he was saved and when he was out he was just next to the pool vomiting uh, the water that he had swallowed by then the chap that threw me in was saying but i was only fooling the guy the chap who had thrown him you know that big bruiser he said i was only fooling someone said now he could hear those words he was he had not yet regained all the consciousness he could hear the kid nearly died be all right now let's carry him to the locker room that man was literally shouting at him do you realize what you have done that boy that little boy would have died but now right now let's take him to the locker room and let him get better several hours later after he was taken to the locker room you know he was uh, out of that all water which he had swallowed and he tried he got he got back to his consciousness he walked home i was weak and trembling he was extremely weak he was shivering he you know the bones inside were rattling i shook and cried when i lay on my bed he was literally shivering even when he went to his bed that that terrible thing that incident was so fresh it had just happened he shook in his bed i couldn't eat that night for days a haunting fear was in my heart for days together the thought kept coming again and again in his mind and really scaring him the slightest exertion even the slightest stress was upset me making me wobbly in the knees and sick to my stomach that little thought that little stress you know totally totally upset him making him wobbly in the knees he couldn't even stand straight every time he felt you know he had that still feeling he felt his knees also had no uh, strength they were just you know shaky they were totally shaky and sick you know you get those things in your stomach you get those pangs this is what he was feeling i never went back to the pool i feared water i avoided it whenever i could now this was that total misadventure that had happened which actually you know where the phobia totally bloomed up now never again that was the case a few years later when i came to know the waters of the cascades the waters of the waterfalls i wanted to get into them now a few years later he's grown up you know now uh, gradually as the time uh, went by uh, he felt you know he was coming out of it with time everything moves on you know whatever you experience uh, terrible things that you experience in life but time is the best healer so with time those bad memories also went and now he had seen the water of the cascades and he wanted to try getting into them and whenever i did whether i was wading the teton or bumping river or bathing in warm lake of the goat rocks now these are all the water bodies in washington these are the rivers in washington the terror that had seized me in the pool would come back now whenever he tried getting into the water you know into these rivers the moment he went in that thought would come you know that i you know the drowning phase what he faced everything would come back to him and everything was just there it would take possession of me completely it would totally you know give me that uh, situation back into my you know mind and heart my legs would become paralyzed i see horror would grab my heart my legs would literally become stiff again they were not ready to support me and the horror that terror that fear would totally grab my heart it would totally come into my mind and heart that no this handicap stayed with me as the years rolled by now this was like being a handicap he did not he wasn't able to enjoy water at all because he felt he was handicapped 
he had that fear going with him it was growing with him and he as the time was going it he felt that i want to get out of it why not uh, in canoes on main lakes fishing for landlocked salmon bass fishing in new hampshire trout fishing on the deschutes and metellus in oregon fishing for salmon on the columbia at bumping lake in the cascades wherever he went whatever water sports he did whatever activities he did be it fishing you know looking for salmon canoeing swimming anything he tried with water wherever i went the haunting fear of the water followed me now that fear was there within him it had literally you know it was totally there inside within him it ruined my fishing trips deprived me of the joy of canoeing boating and swimming all my fishing trips were ruined i couldn't enjoy the water anything i deprived it was it deprived me of the joy it did not even give me the joy of doing any sports any water sports it was totally there i used every way i knew to overcome this fear everything possible that i could think of i tried to overcome this to come out of this but it held me firmly in its grip that grip was tight that scare that horror it was there in his heart it was totally all there it was it was not even ready to dissolve finally one october i decided to get an instructor and learn to swim he says now it was the month of october and i thought let me do one thing let me call for an instructor let me see if he can teach me to swim maybe you know i will probably know technically how to do it then i might gain the confidence so i went to a pool and practiced 5 days a week and hour each day every day for 5 days together every day for 1 hour he would go and practice the instructor took a uh, put a belt around me a rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable now what did the instructor do now he obviously explained to him what is what is his problem so what he did was he tied a belt around his you know waist he did that and he tied a rope on that belt and he put it on a pulley which would take him across that pulley would take you know that support would be there and the end of this rope would be in the instructor's hand so he knew he was absolutely safe he just cannot drown he held on to the end of the rope and we went back and forth back and forth across the pool now with a thing going up and down you know that pulley we all know that rope that goes just like those cable cars so he went back and forth hour after hour day after day week after week he did a lot of practice a lot and we all know practice makes man perfect so this is what he wanted to do on each trip across the pool a bit of the panic seized me now every time he tried getting into the pool and you know that little thing would pop up like a popcorn that thing would just come to my mind each time the instructor relaxed his hold on the rope and i went under some of the old terror returned and my legs froze now every time you know the instructor he would leave that rope loose so the moment he left that loose he would go down obviously because he was holding him back but the moment he left it loose he would get into the water now the moment he would do that he would again get those thoughts because he was you know he could see water right and again that whole scene would come back to his mind and again he would be scared his legs would freeze it was 3 months before the tension began to slack it took him 3 long months for that fear to start dissolving it started reducing it start it began to slack then he taught me to put my face under water and exhale and to raise my nose and inhale now what the next step the instructor did was now after he got this 3 months practice now he told him you do one thing you put your face under water 
right? And you exhale, you breathe out. Then put your nose up when you come out of the water, when your nose is on top of the water, you inhale. So what will happen? There will be a continuous flow uh, of inhaling and exhaling. So he will have enough oxygen in his body to stay underwater. Right, even for whatever a fraction of a second or a minute, whatever, how much ever capacity he had. I repeated the exercise hundreds of times. See, he had nearly faced death. That thing was really fresh in his mind. It was not ready to go. So he wanted to make sure, he wanted to be very, very sure that he does it properly. Bit by bit, I shed part of the panic that seized me when my head went underwater. Gradually, part by part, fraction by fraction, that fear started decreasing. The moment, why it so happened? Because now his confidence level was going up. He knew the technicality of how am I going to swim. So now he could do it. Next, he held me at the side of the pool and had me kick with my legs. We all know that when we go to learn swimming, we all first, you know, we hold on to the edge of the pool and we paddle our uh, legs. For weeks, I did just that. At first, my legs refused to work. His legs were, you know, literally frozen there. They were not ready to put that energy, that power and, you know, try doing it. I, initially, it did not happen. But then, yes, uh, but they gradually relaxed. And finally, I could command them. Then his legs started doing what he wanted them to do. Thus, piece by piece, he built a swimmer. That instructor was a very wise one, a very smart and a skillful one. He removed his fear part by part and piece by piece, he made, he built a swimmer. And when he had perfected each piece, he put them together into an integrated whole. First his legs, then his hands, you know, gradually the inhale, the exhale. He did all the processes step by step and finally he knew he put them all together. In April, he said, you remember he had started in October. In April, he said, now you can swim. Six rigorous months of practice, rigorous practice that was dive off and swim the length of the pool, crawl stroke. I did, the instructor was finished. In the month of April, he told him, look, now you can do, you can cover the length of the pool. Go for it, use the crawl stroke. Don't be, uh, I mean, you know, don't get panicked, just do that. That's one of the strokes that they use for swimming. And then the instructor was finished. He was successful. He made it. And then finally, the role of the instructor was over. He stopped giving him any more training. The training had come to an end. But I was not finished. I still wondered if I could be, if I would be terror stricken when I was alone in the pool. That little bit of confidence was yet missing in him. He said, if I am alone, now this time he had someone to watch him. So he knew he was safe. Even if he would lose control, he would immediately pull him up. But when he was alone in the pool, do you think that terror, that fear would come back? I tried it. I swam the length up and down. Tiny vestiges of the old terror would return. Now, he swam. He swam the length right from one end to the other end. That's the length. He swam the length of the pool. Tiny vestiges. There was this tiny remains. The, those tiny thoughts were still there, which came up to him that, oh, you might drown. Oh, you might just lose control. But now I could frown and say to that terror, trying to scare me, eh? Well, here's to you. Look, and off I'd go for another length of the pool. He says, you think now you are going to take over me? Sorry, I am a perfect swimmer now. Watch me, here I go. And he kept swimming. This went on until July. April, he was ready, the instructor left. 
May, June, July, this thing went on where he was gaining his self-confidence. But I was still not satisfied. Come on, yeah, you, you cannot say it's unfair. It's not easy. He had faced death. So obviously he wanted the time to recover himself. I was not sure that all the terror had left. So I went to Lake Wentworth in New Hampshire, died off a dock at Triggs Island and swam two miles across the lake to Stamp Act Island. Now what he did, he went to Wentworth at uh, New Hampshire and he swam from one island to another. I swam the crawl, breaststroke, side stroke and backstroke. He tried all the strokes. He wanted to make sure that he is perfect in everything, in every stroke at every moment. Only once did the terror return. Once he came across it. When I was in the middle of the lake, I put my face under and saw nothing but bottomless water. While he was, you know, swimming in the lake, he did that. He put his face intentionally in the water and he could see bottomless water. Bottomless, no bottom. He could not see the ground. There was only water and water. The old sensation returned in miniature. In a very small part of it, the miniature. You are aware of what is a miniature? Uh, when you guys go to Taj Mahal, like, you know, places as such, you get those small Taj Mahal, right? So this small souvenir that you get to gift or to keep in your house, this is the miniature version. It's the smaller version of the actual Taj Mahal. So likewise, that old sensation returned in miniature in a very small part. I laughed and said, well, Mr. Terror, what do you think you can do to me? It fled and I swam on. He told the terror, farewell forever. He says, no longer can you do that to me. Now I am perfect. Yet I had residual doubts. He still wanted to get off them. At my first opportunity, I hurried west, went up the Teton to Conrad Meadows, up the Conrad Creek Trail to Miad Glacier and camped in the high meadow by the side of Warm Lake. Now he went to the west side. He went to the west of the, he was in Washington. So he went up there and he tried it even here. He did not spa spare any place. He wanted to make sure that he explored it all. The next morning I stripped, I got into my swimming costume, dived into the lake and swam across to the other shore and back from one corner to the other and back, just as Doug Corcoran used to do. He was one of the renowned swimmers as well as a doctor. So he, he, did, he just tried to make sure that he became one like him, right? He overcame it and that was his achievement. I shouted with joy and Gilbert Peak returned the echo. He was there, that peak, that mountain was there. So he screamed with joy and it echoed back. I had conquered my fear of water. Students, he never gave up. He just never gave up. The experience had a deep meaning for me as only those who have known stark terror and conquered it can appreciate. I think after listening, after visualizing, after imagining, we definitely can literally salute this man for all the courage that he showed, how he conquered his fear. In death, there is peace. Children, this line, what do you mean by this line? You remember how he had explained the moment of oblivion. Oblivion means where he knew nothing, where there was peace, there was calm, there was no terror, no panic. There was peace. That was the time when he was experiencing death. This is what he's saying. In death, there is peace. There is terror 
only in the fear of death as Roosevelt knew when he said all we have to fear is fear itself. Very important. We are afraid of something is a different thing. But we are afraid of fear. That is the biggest fear. That is something which we should come out of. Because I had experienced both the sensation of dying and the terror that fear of it can produce the will to live somehow grew. Very important line. Because I had experienced both what? The sensation of dying. He had experienced death. He had literally come across it. And the terror that fear of it, the fear of dying can produce. The fear of dying, the terror that it can produce, I had experienced both. When he was, you know, sinking twice, he was going, he was fighting. That also he faced the terror as well as he faced the sensation of dying, he faced it both. But the will to live somehow grew. I wanted to live. That was his will. And so he came out of it. At last, I felt released, free to walk the trails and climb the peaks and to brush aside fear. He was finally out of it, out of everything. He made sure that he had conquered that terrible fear which he had faced. Now, these slides will give you the meanings of the words which have been highlighted in red. They were there throughout the slides, if you would have noticed. Uh, very important to go through them. This has been given so that you can also use them while communicating or even while writing your creatives. It makes them sophisticated. It gives them a good quality. So yes, please make sure you go through every word, every meaning. Try getting the grasp, getting the grip of it and use them as well. What message does this lesson give you? There is no failure except in no longer trying. Just like he did, did he stop trying? Did he want to ever give up? No, he never did it. So this message goes to you too. Never stop trying, keep watching and keep learning.